Hello there, and welcome back to The Shed. Today, we're going to be talking about Cyril's most useful tool, I believe, which is the Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch Tool. So, without any further ado, let's go to the desktop. OK, let's open it up. Let's just turn our attention to this graph. Uh, the left-hand end of it represents the dark areas, the shadows in the image. The right-hand end of it represents the highlights, the bright areas like stars. And all the other shades between the shadows and the highlights fall between. Now the vertical axis, that represents how many pixels there are for each of the shades between the shadows and the highlights. So in this case, there's a huge peak which will represent the majority of the background of this image. The next thing to notice is this diagonal line that goes from the bottom left hand to the top right hand corner of the graph. This is a reference line against which stretches are measured. So now I'm going to apply a gentle stretch. As you can see, that just brightened up the image a little bit and it's created this nice gentle parabolic curve, which is just above the reference line. What that means is because it's above the reference line, it's a little bit brighter. I can reverse this effect by picking the inverse generalized hyperbolic transform option here. And that pushes the curve below the line and everything gets a bit darker. OK, so I'm now just going to go back and I will reset that. Next thing I'm going to look at is the symmetry point. That's this control here. Uh, there are a few different ways of setting the symmetry point, but the one I'm going to use now is just a click on the middle of the graph. And that's set it to approximately uh, 0.5. Now, if I now apply a little bit of a stretch, you'll see that I create two curves. One's going negative, so everything in that curve would be getting darker. One's going positive, so everything in that curve would be getting brighter. So what that means is any data to the right-hand side of the center line gets brighter, any data to the left-hand side of the center line gets a bit darker. The next control we can look at is the local stretch intensity. Now that uh, just modifies the curve. It makes it shallower or steeper. And effectively, it could be used to just adjust the curve to maybe give a little bit more contrast. Uh, probably better that I actually demonstrate that. Now, what I'm going to do next is to move the symmetry point. And as I move it, you can see I'm moving it into the data and the data is getting brighter. Now, if I just um, zoom in a little bit on that, you can see how the curve is crossing all the data and it's it effectively sloping up. So it's affecting the right hand side, the highlights side of the data more than the left hand side, which is the shadows and the background. That's why the background is still say, pretty dark, but these other areas like the nebulosity are starting to brighten up. If I want to make that more uh, more severe, if you like, then I can increase the stretch intensity. Like so. Now that's increased the contrast. If I then wanted to, I could move the symmetry point back just to adjust that slightly. And that would really brighten things up. I could also increase the stretch factor, which pushes it even further. Now I think it's gone too far personally, but you can see what I'm saying. Uh, so we push the background into being pretty dark and we've quite we've enhanced these areas of nebulosity quite a bit but as i say i think that's a bit bit extreme i i wouldn't necessarily do that myself it's also bloating the stars that's another thing so we'll put it back we'll just raise a symmetry point i don't know to about there and we'll just do it in a more gentle way, maybe a little bit more local stretch intensity, make that a little steeper. We can play with a symmetry point, so that's going to make the thing a bit brighter, but also the background a bit brighter. 
move to the right we can start to just try and get rid of the background try and bury the noise a bit increase the local stretch intensity a bit maybe increase the stretch factor as well a bit there oh, that's quite nice so i might apply that reset it i could now apply another little stretch if i wanted to but you see the kind of way this works it's it's really all about this s curve and and where the pivot point of the s curve falls within the data that being said you've got to you've got to sort of visualize this stuff which isn't so easy so if i just stretch this again uh, i've got some other controls here like highlight protection so I'll show you how that works. If, if I put a positive stretch on it, now I can drag the highlight protection in, and if you watch the curve, it's flattening the top end of it out. So it is stopping the curve affecting the highlights so much, so it's protecting them. You can do the same in certain conditions with shadow protection, which kind of works from the other way. It obviously goes from left to right. It's just another way of, of, of tailoring the shape of the curve a bit more really you know you might find it useful occasionally i don't honestly find it that useful most of the time i think playing with these three things the stretch factor the local stretch intensity and the symmetry point that that to me is where most of the key work is done uh, now we could just look at a couple of these other options we've got so we've got um the generalized hyperbolic transform, the inverse version of that, which just does the opposite. We've got the modified arc sine uh, transform and the inverse version of that. Uh, that one is a, a simpler, a bit simpler to use, uh, and that is supposed to preserve the colors better um, than the other kinds of stretches. Uh, you've got a linear stretch, which can be quite useful. That's just for sometimes sneaking in the black point a little bit. In this case, we've got nowhere to go with that. We're already on the black point. If I pull that across, you'll see it'll start clipping. You can see the clip figure here. We want to really keep that at zero. So that's fine. Then we have um, the color stretch model. So we've got independent channel values, which you would need to use uh, in another scenario, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, you've got uh, human weighted luminance, even weighted luminance, which are just two different luminance algorithms. Luminance is kind of like brightness, but it's not the same thing actually. Luminance is to do with how much light objects put out rather than how bright we perceive them to be. I think that's kind of how it works. Uh, another very useful one is saturation stretch. So with saturation stretch, we can um, we can saturate our colors more, which is uh, yeah obviously too much. Uh, or we could do the opposite and desaturate. So if they were a bit too bright, we can take a bit of color out of them, like that. So that's a very handy one. Now the independent channel values one. You have to use that if you want to start manipulating the, the uh, color channels independently, which you can do. So um, by deselecting these buttons, you can select one or more channels to manipulate. So at the moment, um, I've deselected the red, deselected the blue, it means I can now mess about with the green channel if I like. So I could just stretch the green channel. Sorry, I've uh, applied an inverse, which is why it's gone that way. If I put that to the normal generalized hyperbolic, it'll go bright green, which is what you'd expect. Reset that. Now this comes in very handy though, if you do get um, an imbalance, so you get like a very you know bright green or a bright purple image, you can use this feature here to correct the channels manually and balance them back up. You can also do two at a time, so I could leave the blue and uh, do the red and green together. Still use your symmetry points and all that kind of thing. Stretch intensity, so. Uh, 
there you are. Yeah, anyway, you can do all sorts of stuff with that, but I'm going to leave that at the moment. You really need to um, have a purpose for that. Anyway, I hope you found that useful, and once again, thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.